I want to share uh, from Psalms 81 tonight. Uh, I want to talk about uh, what God is saying to us in this in this psalm, uh, which is always relevant to uh, God's people anywhere, anytime, any place. It was addressed to the Israelites, and it was actually a song. It was actually a song that they sung, and uh, but I want to read this here as we start here tonight. It says, "Sing aloud to God our strength." Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song, sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our feast day. For it is a statute for Israel, a rule of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. I hear a language I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you, but you shall not bow down. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide. And I will fill it. But my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. So I gave them over to the, their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. Oh, that my people would listen to me. That Israel would walk in my ways. I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe toward him and their fate would last forever. But he would feed you with the finest of the wheat and with honey from the rock. I would satisfy you. The, this song is a lament in a sense. It is talking about what could have been what or what would have been. And that's a sad story if you have to think about what would have been. If we people know what could have happened and the blessing that God has for their life, it's terrible to look back and, and think about what could have been. And that's what calls us today. This psalm calls us today to obedience, to be right in the middle of what God is wanting to do in our life, that we might not um, miss the blessing he has for us. They're told to sing to God, who is our strength. They're, they're to, and, and in so doing, they would remember all God's work that he's done. They, he talks about uh, that, that, how they, he, that, that God had heard a language he had not known, which is the Egyptian language. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were, were freed from the basket. God freed them from uh, the, their, their servitude, from their slavery in Egypt, where they were working so hard to try to uh, do what the Egyptians wanted them to do. And they were being, they were being driven hard. He says in distress in verse 7, you called and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. And so he's talking about what he did. And this psalm goes back to what God did. We need to go back to what God did. The Israelites will remember God's works through the festivals. And all of this is talking about uh, a reference to uh, sometimes it seems the Passover because this is a, a reference to how God uh, delivered them from Egypt, which is what the Passover is all about. Um, but he's also talking about um, uh, a time when it would have been the, the, the Feast of Trumpets uh, later in the year, in the seventh month, uh, and then the Feast of Tabernacles, where they remember where God had had come. And it all, it's all this is kind of put together. He talks about blow the trumpet at the new moon, which is the first of the month, and the, and the full moon, which is the middle of uh, of the month, and uh, we know that the, the Feast of Tabernacles was on the 15th day of the seventh month, and it seems like that might be the, the more focus that he's talking about here, because he said God answered them in the secret place of thunder. He answered them from the place where uh, they couldn't understand, but it was the power, more powerful than the thunder that God uh, came from. Uh, he says he tested you at the waters of Meribah, which is um, 
has to do with the word quarreling. Merba means quarreling. And so they complained and they quarreled with God. Have you brought us here to, to cause us to die from thirst? And uh, and they they was not trusting God. They, they God had already delivered them, had, had helped them to travel a long distance and, and uh, given them, uh, delivered them through the Red Sea and had given them uh, all kind of provision of water already. But now they're complaining and thinking that God's not going to do it and forgetting that God wanted to make them a nation and make them independent. They couldn't, they couldn't see the forest for the trees. They were isolated at one point in time and began to complain. Not unlike us today. When we go to focusing and, and complaining about some, something small that's going on that uh, we don't like and we wish was different rather than praying and asking God to, to help us through it. But the reason that's were to remember God's work in the past. But there's a phrase. There's a phrase where he talks about, uh, oh, if, oh, Israel, you would but listen to me in verse 8. And, and he's saying that we need to hear and listen to the Lord. That was their biggest need was to hear and listen to the Lord. You know, it's not that we talk ourselves, but that we stop and listen to what the Lord is wanting to say to our lives. In the hustle and bustle, we forget to listen. And now we're not hustling and bustling. We have time to listen, more than we have in the past. And so it's a time that we're going through with this virus uh, uh, going around, that we ought to listen. This is, a, this is a high time to listen to what the Lord will want to say to our lives. Uh, he, he says, oh, that my people would listen to me in verse 13. That Israel would walk in my way. This is repeated twice. And so the, the biggest need is for us to listen. Romans 1, 24, I might turn there and I'll share with you that he says, it says here, therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever Amen. They wouldn't listen. And one of the judgments of God when people won't listen is God just hands them over to do what they want to do. And there's no hesitation to do what is totally unnatural. There's no hesitation to go into abomination before God. And, and so uh, God just hands them over to worship the creation rather than the creator. They, they chose that so much and wanted it so much that God just gave them over, over to what they wanted. And this is what's happening to Israel in this Psalms 81, is that God is wishing that they would be willing to listen. Uh, and so, you know, the word hear is so important that we find in this. And I, I want us to go to Deuteronomy 4, 1 through 6, where he talks about us hearing. He says, And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor. For the Lord your God destroyed from among you all the men who followed the Baal of Peor. And this has to do with, with prostitution in the worship of uh, the God of Baal, um, that happened as they were coming in the promised land. And there was a great thousands of people that died of the Israelites. And God judged on that particular incident because they uh, was not wanting to honor God as first. And, and so God judged them. And he says, You're, you've seen what I did. Uh, he destroyed those people from among his people. Verse 4, but you who held fast to the Lord your God are all alive today. See, I have taught you statutes and rules, as the Lord my God commanded me, that you should do them in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who when they hear of these statutes will say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. The smartest and the wisest we can be is at that place that we're hearing God, that we're spending time in his word, that we're listening to his voice in devotion to him. And this is what Israel was had come to a place they, they, they wouldn't do. We need to hear and listen to the Lord. It's our, this is our life. 
This is our path of joy and our path of peace. Uh, and last of all, in this passage, he's saying, if we would but obey, the Lord would bring his blessing to us. The Lord is longing and, and, and wishing that it could have been different, that it would be different. And there's still hope in this talking like this. But he says uh, in verse 11, but my people did not listen to my voice. Israel would not submit to me. And so that's why he gave them order to their stubborn hearts to follow their own counsels. But he mentions what he would do. He says, I would soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe toward him and their fate would last forever. But he would feed you with the finest of the wheat and with honey from the rock, I would satisfy you. You know, we know that God fed him with uh, manna from heaven. It was called the, the food of angels. And it was a very sweet uh and they called the word manna means what is it? Because no one knew what it was and they never ever heard of it, but it was God's provision. But what's he saying here that God would have given honey out of a rock? He would have caused something unheard of, as if as manna was unheard of. He would have caused something even better to come out um, if they would just submit to him and turn to him and, and be obedient to him and not to the other gods of the world. And, and, and of course, God did give him water out of a rock, and um, he provided for him in that way. Uh, and he gave him food, of course, as, we talk, as we're talking about. But he says he would give them the finest of wheat. God would have done that. He would have taken care of their greatest needs. He would have taken care of them in a tremendous way. He already had. It's just they just couldn't get the message. And, you know, God wants us to get the message, that God wants to bless us. And are we, are we like them? that we're not turning to him. Now's the time to turn to Jesus because his time is now that for us to be saved. The time is now for us to experience his blessing and not to miss it. I want to look in Psalms 48 here. This is uh, what God would say to Isaiah uh, about um, what God really wanted to do with his people, what he desired and what he longed for to, to bless them. He says, oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. This is uh, Isaiah 48, 18. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand and your descendants like its grains. Their name would never be cut off or destroyed from before me. God says it would have been your peace would have been like a river. You would have had peace unending. You would have had righteousness like the waves of the sea. You'd have known the, the joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord. But the psalmist says, they would not submit to me. That's what his words were. You know, God is reaching out to us today. To, to be just like it, we're to remember what Jesus did on the cross for us. Jesus came and loved us so much that he died for us on the cross. We're to remember that work that he did for us. We're to listen and take it to heart. For he is the bread of life, as it says in John 6. And if we would obey him and turn to him, we would know the joy and the peace and the eternal bliss, the eternal happiness that he has for us which doesn't mean we're going to have an easy life, but it means our future is secure and future is bright and there's peace in our future. And though we have difficulties today, we'll have his peace today. I want to end uh, here today talking about what Jesus said in Matthew 23 about Israel. Matthew 23, verse 37. And he is looking over this and it's right after this that he began to talk of how what the signs of his, of his return. But he says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now they're talking about saying it to Jesus. Blessed is he, Jesus, who comes in the name of the Lord. They won't see him again until they, they, they'll say that. And that's going to happen one day. But you see, they've, they've turned away from him as a whole. Now there's many of them that are coming to Christ today. There's many, there's many Jews coming to Christ, but there's a great number that, that have rejected Christ. And God, the Lord will tell, will say that how he longs for Jerusalem. He, he longs for them. And he said, how often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. But you were not willing. You see, it was Jerusalem. The people, the inhabitants of Jerusalem were not willing to let God do it. They would not submit to him. They, were, they, act, they acted like the people of God externally, but they weren't the people of God because they rejected the Son of God. Now there was that's there's that was the majority, but there was the exception of the remnant that that would submit. But today, God is calling us to turn to Him and be obedient to Him, because God is a blessing for us. He says He's He has plans for us. He said, "I'm not come to I have not come to uh, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly." He's come that we might have real life and have it abundantly and that's why we're to turn to jesus here today i invite you today to turn to jesus i'm reminded that at the feast of tabernacles which is where the context where we were at that they would pour out water during that feast as a reminder of how water was poured out of a rock came out of a rock when moses hit the rock they're rephidim and they were, they were, their thirst was quenched. While they were doing that, it was during that feast in John 7, 37, that Jesus cried out, Come to me, everyone who's thirsty, and I'll give you living water. He talked about how, the, as the scripture said, out of, out of his innermost being, he that believes on him will flow rivers of living water. And God wants to give us living water. He wants us to come and know the joy and the peace that he has for us if we'll just but turn to him and have that peace and the joy that he so is ready to give. If you're ready to receive it today, if you're ready to ask him to change your life, if you have never turned to the Lord, maybe you need to turn to the Lord today. You know it. We all need to turn to the Lord in this time. And this is what God is saying has come to me, he says. But if you've never done it, and, and you want to ask Jesus to be your Lord, I'm going to pray this prayer. You pray this with me to Jesus right now. Dear Jesus, I know that I've sinned and gone my way. I have turned away from you, and I have, wanted not, I have not submitted to you. But I believe you died for my sins, and you paid for them all at the cross. I want to thank you for that, Lord. And I want to ask you today, right now, to change me, be my Lord and Savior. Make me, make me what you want me to be. And I confess you today as Lord. And in Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. God bless you.